Okay, we begin the review of section 4.1. This is about arc sine. This question, if find the exact value of the expression without using a calculator or table. Arc sine of square root of 2 over 2. So the key here is if arc sine of square root of 2 over 2 equals x, then that's the same as, as almost the same as sine x equals square root 2 over 2. So where does sine equal square root of 2 over 2? Well, I know that sine of pi fourths equals square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, arc sine of square root of 2 over 2 is pi fourths. You do want to keep track of the arc sine will only ever give you a value of either a po between 0 and pi f halves, the first quadrant, or negative 0 to pi halves. So if you get a negative answer, it's actually in the negative 1 quadrant. And if you get a positive answer, it's in the positive 1 quadrant. So although sine of 3 pi fourths also equals square root of 2 over 2, arc sine of 2 square root of 2 over 2 would never equal 3 pi fourths because it's not in quadrant 1 or negative 1. Okay, next question. Find the exact value of the expression without using a calculator or table. Arc cosecant. So the relationship with cosecant. Cosecant x equals 1 over sine x. However, arc cosecant of y let's see, is arc sine of 1 over y. So they both have a reciprocal nature going from cosecant to sine. However, when you have the regular function cosecant, then that equals 1 over sine. But when you have the arc cosecant, then the inside is what flips. So knowing this, we can get arc cosecant negative 1 of negative 2 equals arc sine of negative 1 half. So now we're asking ourselves the question, when is sine negative 1 half? Now, arc sine lives here, somewhere in there, or here, somewhere in there. That's the only spots the arc sine lives. So keep keeping track of all students take calculus, this is the quadrant where arc sine would be negative. Sine is 1 half at 30 degrees, or pi sixths, so this is negative pi sixths. Our answer is right there, negative pi sixths. Arc sine, again, will only ever give you values between positive and negative 90 degrees. All right, next question. Arc cosine. Arc cosine of square root of 2 over 2. When is cosine square root of 2 over 2? So cosine of x equals square root of 2 over 2. I know that cosine of pi half fourths equals square root of 2 over 2. So therefore, arc cosine of square root of 2 over 2 equals pi fourths. Where does arc cosine live? Arc cosine positive is in quadrant 1. And arc cosine being negative is in quadrant 2. This is a positive number inside, so we're going to get something in quadrant 1 for our answer. Pi fourths. Next question. All right, arc tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3. So, a couple of facts about tangent we have tangent of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 3. So that's the value. You might also have it for tangent of pi sixths, depending on if you need or want radians or degrees. But then also some information about arctangent. Arctangent 
if it's positive we're in quadrant one if it's negative we're in quadrant negative one so the reference angle that we're going to be working with is 30 degrees or pi 6 because that's the one that gives tangent square root 3 over 3. The reference angle is either going to be in quadrant 1 or in quadrant negative 1 because we're working with arc tangent. In our case, since we have a negative number, we know arc tangent will be a negative 1 quadrant, so our answer is negative pi 6 negative pi 6. Well, that didn't look too good here. Negative pi 6. There we go. Next question. Find the exact value of the composition arc, uh, sorry, sec cosecant of arc sine of 3 fifths. There are a couple of ways we can work this out. Three distinct possibilities. One way is to deal with arc, I'm uh, sorry, cosecant. We can write the cosecant as 1 over sine. And inside doesn't change. That didn't look quite right. That's a negative 1. So we draw that. Now when we do it this way, the sine and the arc sine reduce, giving us 1 over 3 fifths, which is five-thirds. Method two. Method two that didn't work. Let's try that again. That didn't work. Let's try that again. We deal with the arc sine knowing so the outside doesn't change but the inside we're going to change that to arc secant when we go from arc sine to arc secant the number on the inside flips so we get the reciprocal so that will change to five-thirds if we do it this way then we get the secant cosecant and arc cosecant to cancel and our answer is five-thirds so so far we've seen that we can take the function cosecant flip it to one over sine and then the sine and the arc sine cancel and we get one over three-fifths which is five-thirds we can also reduce or change this sine to arc sine to arc cosecant and when that happens then the number inside flips and then it reduces to five-thirds. The third way is with triangles. So essentially arc sine lives in quadrant one or quadrant negative one. So here quadrant one sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what we're looking at is this right here. This is an angle. Arc sine of three-fifths is an angle. I'm representing that angle right here. And it's the angle whose sine is opposite 3, so opposite 3, adjacent 5. Now knowing Pythagorean theorem, this is the 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is positive, positive 4, this is positive 3, because it's right and up, and the hypothesis of hypotenuse is always positive. Now we need, so we've, we have our angle expressed as a triangle, and we're trying to find cosecant. Cosecant is hypotenuse 5 over opposite 3 sine is 3 over 5 cosecant is 5 over 3 three distinct methods to work this one out all right next question on this question since we have sine and arc tangent we can't change sine into a tangent easily, and we can't change arc tangent into an arc sine easily. So our third method of our last problem is going to be our only method of this problem, unless we want to get into a whole bunch of identities, which I don't want to. So arc tangent lives in quadrant one. So we set up at quadrant one angle. 
So essentially we're letting alpha equal arctangent of 2. So we can change that to tangent alpha equals 2. So we're looking for tangent, which is opposite. Let's see. Oh, this is not working so well. Hold on. So opposite over adjacent is 2 over 1. Now I'm putting an over 1 there so we have a nice tangent. So that's alpha. That's the angle. Tangent, arc tangent of 2. With Pythagorean theorem, we have 2 squared, 4, plus 1 squared, 5. Square root of that. So this is square root 5. You can check all to the right is positive, up is positive, hypotenuse is always positive. Now we want to find sine of that angle. We're asked for sine of alpha, essentially, where alpha is arctangent of 2. So sine is opposite 2 over hypotenuse, square root of 5. So we've taken this angle and represented it in this format, filled out the triangle with Pythagorean theorem, and now we're trying to do sine of this angle, which is opposite over hypotenuse. We can rationalize the denominator if you need to, and sometimes books will require this, to get 2 square root 5 divided by 5. This completes this question. Next one. All right, now this question is a little sneaky. First off, arc sine. I can express that. That is an angle. So let's let alpha equal arc sine of 5 over 13. In other words, we can express alpha with a triangle. Alpha is opposite 5 over hypotenuse 13. Using Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared is 169 minus 5 squared is 25. 169 minus 25 is 144 and the square root of 144 is 12. And let's double check. To the right is positive, up is positive, hypotenuse is positive. We now have our triangle filled out and what we have, notice what I've circled here is just the arc sign. That's alpha. So we're really looking for cosine of one half alpha. We can't just do cosine alpha here. We have to do cosine one half alpha. So we're not doing cosine of this angle directly. Instead, we have to use our half angle formulas. So cosine of alpha halves is plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine alpha over 2. The plus or minus, we know that if alpha is in quadrant 1, then half alpha, which would be about here, is also in quadrant 1. Because we're in quadrant 1, cosine is positive. Cosine alpha, I have a theta in there. Let's see if I can't get rid of that theta. It's not going to let me. Let's see if I can just rewrite it then. There. Alpha. Sorry about that. Alpha. Cosine alpha we can find with our triangle because we have alpha. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this value is going to be 12 thirteenths. So we have plus square root 1 plus 12 thirteenths over 2. Now we have to simplify this and see what we get. So this is, that is the answer. If you were rushed for time, you could leave that. And hopefully, I mean, it is correct. It's not simplified. You might not get full credit. But it is correct, so you should get most credit. 
the, the numerator, 12 thirteenths plus 1 is 25 thirteenths. Divide this by 2 is the square root 25 over 26. Now to rationalize this, we can first notice the numerator reduces to just 5. Then we can multiply by square root 26 over square root 26 and get our final answer. 5 square root 26 over 26. Now this question was a little tricky because they didn't just ask the direct question cosine angle. They said cosine half angle. When you see arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, arc cosecant, arc secant, arc cotangent, any of those arc functions, recognize that those arc functions are angles. So we have cosine one half angle. That's a basic identity, although it's not one that's easy to compute always. It should be one that you probably, I haven't memorized because it's not as easy to um, formulate from our previous identities that I do have. It just takes too long. I can do it. It just takes longer than it's worth, so I have it memorized. But to recognize that that's one half angle is something different. And that angle, arc anything, can be represented in a triangle. It makes it one of the easiest ways to do it. All right, next question. Sine of arc cotangent of x. So from our previous discussion, we can recognize that arc cotangent x is an angle. Let's call it alpha. So alpha equals arc cotangent x. That means we can represent this with a triangle. Now I'm going to put an x over 1 because cotangent is tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So adjacent is x, opposite is 1. If I asked you cotangent of this angle, I would expect you to go adjacent over opposite. And x over 1 is just x, just x. Then Pythagorean theorem. Square root of x squared plus 1. That's just simply x squared plus 1 squared and square root of that. Now that we have that, this problem is pretty simple because we're asking for sine of alpha. That's just opposite 1 over hypotenuse, square root x squared plus 1. And then we can rationalize this to get square root x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Either of those answers are fine for me. Your teacher might say otherwise. Next question. This question is back to one that we can do in multiple ways because we're dealing with reciprocals, cotangent and tangent, although it's arctangent. So we can do with this in three different approaches. First way, we deal with the function, the cotangent, and write this as 1 over tangent of arctangent of x and we get the tangent and arctangent to reduce giving us 1 over x. The second approach would be to deal with the arctangent and write that as an arc cotangent. When we do this the inside is what gets the reciprocal. The x turns into 1 over x when we take arc tangent to go to arc cotangent. I like this negative 1 notation because it's faster and writing on this tablet it's just not as pretty as my regular writing so the less writing I do the better I feel. Alright, cotangent and arc cotangent cancel leaving us 1 over x. And the third way again is the way that always works and that's the triangle. We represent arc tangent as alpha, where alpha tangent of alpha would be x over 1. And this gives us square root of 1 plus x squared, or x squared plus 1. And that actually doesn't matter in this case, because we're doing cotangent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite, 1 over x. 
uh, multiple ways. Why the previous ones weren't able to be done in multiple ways easily is because they were not reciprocal functions like cotangent and arctangent. So we couldn't change one to the arc of the other. Okay, this completes this section's review.